Welcome to RealHound University. Once we've created a brand new database, or we have an existing database that we want to update, we can begin by creating our users and teams. If you have questions on how to create or locate a database, please check out our guides on either creating a new database or locating an existing database. To set up our users, teams, passwords, and security permissions, we can go to File, Administration, and Users and Teams. Now on the screen that appears, there's a read this first section up at the top. Please do read that information. It's very important information about things to do and to not to do. And uh, we'll, we'll provide you with some good information about uh, things to, to make sure you set up your users appropriately. Now down the left hand side is our list of users. At the top is our administrator record. Now every single database has an administrator record created in it. The administrators, uh, essentially a do not touch record. It provides some stability in the database, and no one should be logging in consistently as the administrator. The only time you really need to log in as the administrator is if you are making changes to user and team permission, uh, security roles, things like that. Because of this, the administrator record is very easy to set up. All we need to do is provide a password. You type it in twice in order to confirm it and click set password, and my password is set. And then if you're going to be syncing using live RealHound Share Anywhere tool, you want to click this checkbox to allow the live connection. So the administrator record is very easy. You want to make sure it always stays in there. You actually cannot delete it. And you want to give it a password. And you want to make sure you check that checkbox to allow the live connection if you are going to be setting up the Share Anywhere synchronization. Once we've set up the administrator, we can move on to adjusting or adding new users. If I select this other user that was created for me automatically, the information in the middle changes and allows me to modify it specifically for this user. Now this user was created for me automatically when the database was created. It does it based on the last person to log into the database or your Windows user ID. If I don't like the way that it set it up for me, I can change it by typing in my desired user ID, my role, this is who I am and what I do in the database. So maybe I'm an agent, a manager, a marketing assistant, researcher, whatever my role is. I can enter my name, my email address, and then I want to set up my me contact. Now the me contact is very important. Just like you have a contact record for every client, uh, tenant, property manager, property owner, uh, you also want to have a contact record for every single user in the database. Once you have that user created, you need to have it linked back to their user record in order to make sure that they can have uh, tasks assigned to them, calendars, uh, information assigned to them, notes assigned to them, things like that. Without the me contact, that won't work. So to update this, I can simply click the look up button. Now it brings me up a search screen where I can search through all the contacts in my database. So I can enter in the information and search. Now my name's not in here. I'm not an existing contact in my database. If I am, I can simply double click my name on the list. If I'm not, I can simply come down here and click the new contact button instead. I'll go through and enter my information. And once I've put in all the information I need, I can click Add. What this does is it adds me not only as a contact, but then it ties me back to my user record so that all the full functionality will be established as well. I can come down here, enter my password. Now every user in the database may have a unique password. They can have the same, but they don't have to. Type it in twice to set it, and it tells me that this user has a password. And then you also want to make sure that this checkbox is checked to allow the live connection if you are going to be syncing with live and you want this user to have live share access as well. Next is the security level. Security levels are levels 1 through 4 and determine what I can see within the database. So a level 4 is a global administrator. What this means is that it, this user, if it is a global administrator, will be able to see anything and everything in the database. Even if someone else adds a private node or a private contact, 
a global administrator will still have access to it and be able to change it. Global administrators typically will be limited to one or two people that oversee the database, usually a, a database administrator and maybe the office manager if you're sharing across an office, uh, something like that. For smaller teams uh, of, of two or three folks or individuals using a database, you typically give all the people in the database level four if you'd like as well. Uh, but for some of the larger shared teams, uh, you'll want to use the other security levels to start limiting access to what the different people can see. This limits not only the, the ability to view different contact, property, and note information, but it also limits functionality as well. Uh, only the administrators will be able to do data imports, uh, use Data Doctor to make large changes to the database, that sort of thing. Now, below a level four is a level three. A level three administrator is a team administrator, and the teams are created right up in this team section. So if, say I'm sharing information across my database and I manage the office team. I can enter my team name, the office team up here, and when I leave the field it says, this is not a valid team, would I like to add it? I can say yes. Now, as a team administrator for the office team, I can see anything and everything added by an individual on the office team. So if I go through and begin adding other users to this list of users in the database, and some of them are on the office team and some are on other teams, uh, anybody that falls into my office team, I will be able to see anything that they create. Uh, if someone creates a private note or a private contact and does not belong to my team, I will not be able to see it. Security level two is the most common user level. Uh, this means I'm allowed to see uh, records that are open to my team and open to everybody in the database. Anything that's a private note that I did not create or a private contact that I did not create or property, etc., I will not be able to see it. Uh, so the typical setup is there's one or two global administrators, maybe a team administrator, and then the majority of users in a shared database tend to be level two, uh, having the ability to, to manage and modify their team's records and any records that are open to everybody in the database. Level one is read only. So what that means is that a level one individual has access to all the same information as a level two, the appropriate team and open database records, but they can't make any changes. It's read only. I can come back in here and adjust this at any time. And these security levels again are tied to the user and visibility settings on each individual contact and property record. If I ever want to remove someone from a team, I can always come right back up here, check the team, the little gray box next to the team, and click Remove User from Team, and it drops them all together. The last thing right down here is your Commercial IQ login. Uh, within RealHound, there's a partnership with Catalyst, or Commercial IQ, and if you have a login to their uh, information, you can plug it in right here, and it provides you additional functionality within the program. Once this user is all set, it's now up to date, and I can continue by adding new users and adding all the users that I want to have access in my database. Thank you for taking the time today. For the next steps on how to set up our database, please check out the live setup instructions. Thank you very much, and have a great day.